every day I'm realizing just how much of a masochist I've been, which is why I can relate to men so much. So for context, click this comment, go through a whole series of reasons why men love to be a hero, love to be in pain, love to, are just obsessed with this like, you know, warlike mentality of always having an enemy, whether it's man versus man or man versus nature or man versus bear. And how Hollywood just churns out all this crap and encourages it. And it's, it's tied to like toxic masculinity, um, capitalism, white supremacy culture, patriarchy, patriarchy and all that stuff. It's totally dehumanizing and makes men um, martyr themselves out for the dumbest stuff. And it's oftentimes, uh, besides rooted in the way we're conditioned, it's rooted in trauma and so many men not dealing with their trauma. By the way, look at my dog right now. <laughs> <laughs> but let me just give you an example of an example I realized today of how masochistic I am. And I, I believe it is absolutely rooted in trauma. Now, I was, you know, conditioned and raised as a woman, but I kind of did what a lot of women do. And also maybe because I'm a tomboy and maybe it's just part of who I am. Like, there's a lot of things at play here. But a lot of women go from relationship to relationship to relationship to keep playing out their trauma. Or you know, lose themselves in relationships so that they don't have to face, you know, childhood trauma or like, you know, usually multiple SA stuff. Because I don't know a single woman who hasn't been traumatized by a man. Not one. Whether it's little T or big T. But um, a lot women are kind of pushed into the codependent route of being relationship focused and everything about the king baby and, you know, or just, you know, nurturing everybody and pouring into everyone but ourselves. Now, I took the opposite route. I was so pissed that I was expected to do that when I just wanted to be like a dude. You know, I didn't want to be a dude, but I wanted the freedom to, to feel strong and powerful and do things that dudes did. When I was a teenager, I remember being obsessed with um, Braveheart. Listen to the soundtrack. Well, I was like working out and I just, I imagine I'm Braveheart. I'm not the chick who got her like throat sliced. I'm not the, the other chick that he was, you know, banging. I don't even remember what she didn't play an important whatever. I wanted to be Braveheart, you know, with my head cut off as I'm sacrificing something and dropping the white, you know? I wanted to be the hero. I did. I didn't want any man saving me because in my experience, men were my biggest threat. I wanted to prove that I did not need them and that they could not overpower me. And so I tapped out of dating and dealing with men at all instead became a like a toxically masculine feminist hated women basically you know the cool girl which is another form of a of a pick me but just you know cool girl doesn't necessarily have to date a man i was a cool girl in terms of like being the cool girl at work the cool friend that men uh, felt comfortable talking crap about other w w about women in front of right oh i don't mind who you know inappropriate stuff yeah oh yeah well, you want to hear inappropriate boom you know i would make men like shiver in discomfort if you can't join beat them join them and so part of being this big tough strong girl who sleeps in the outdoors by herself all the time i mean i was like refused to even put up a tent because i don't want to be a <laughs> <laughs> so much internalized misogyny, right? I mean, even after I moved to New York, I could not give up this truck. And I would go, I would sleep in my truck in upstate New York while paying for an apartment in, in, in New York City. You know, I'm paying rent in New York City, but sleeping in my car. And I thought for the longest time that this is because I'm tough. I'm adventurous. I like to feel strong. And all those things are true. But what I've come to realize, the more... um trauma I have uncovered, more um, schmegual violence that I remember from my childhood, and all kinds of just ridiculous thing that, that happened to me that made me think there was something wrong with me. One of my favorite things to do is what a lot of men like to do, which is just endure pain. Now, as a woman, my whole body is in pain all the time. I literally went to make sure I didn't have cancer two days ago because my boobs hurt constantly, all the time. I can't even dance without them hurting. And I have tiny boobs. I don't know if y'all noticed. I have like no boobs because I have a chicken bone. Um, so I have no cleavage. I never have. And apparently, 
It's hormones. And then I'm just, this is just gonna, I mean, you know, if it's not period pain, it's boobs hurting all the time, it's something. And then you endure the violence of men, whether it's their emotional violence, with their mood, or their physical violence, with actually literally threatening to unalive you or trying to, or their schmegual violence, right? There's so much violence that women endure at the hands of men or threats of violence, which actually do a lot of damage too. Walking on eggshells, right? So I'm used to pain. Mind it. I'm very comfortable. I have a, bit, a close relationship with pain. I'm a little too comfortable with it. Just get off on it. You know, one of my the the thing I love to do was go climbing and be in pain and endure, like the elements, freezing. Const. I can't tell you how many times in the wilderness I thought I was gonna die. You know, or just dehydration, or just because there's always something. You never are in control with nature, even no matter how careful you are. Something can happen all the time. And that stuff, in the moment, I'm like, yeah, like, I'm going to get through it. And I, I developed amazing skills. I'm not, I'm very proud of my life. I'm very proud of what I did. Because it, I'd rather be M Melanie versus nature versus than Melanie versus a man in her home who says he loves her, you know? Because that's really the closest I've ever been to death was when the first, was when I decided I'd let a myself fall in love with a man at the age of 36. After putting myself in danger constantly. The closest I got to death was letting a man in my heart. So I'm very proud of my life as a climber and, and you know, um, backpacking guide and, you know, mountain guide, whitewater raft guide, ski, gu ski instructor, all that stuff. I'm proud of that. I don't regret that. It did give me unbelievable skills and gave me so much confidence. And yet at the, at the same time, what I have really been uh, like, horrified to realize is that a lot of this is rooted in trauma and feeling like I deserve pain that I deserve like I'm I'm the person and I know you know a lot of men like this but do you know women like this they're, they're we exist but I just I mean I would not buy a bed frame I would sleep on a mattress on the floor and not even a real mattress a blow-up mattress I think at the age of 32 I bought my first nice mattress uh, but it wasn't new. It was used. Bought, you know, a bed bug cover in case it had something in it. And I was so proud of myself for spending like 50 bucks on a mattress to put on the floor. So the every, I mean, over the years, one of the biggest things that I've had to deal with is my relationship to home because that's where the violence started. And my, my relationship with my home is very closely connected to my relationship with my body specifically my schmegsuality and being, you know, a childhood SA survivor, it all makes sense, especially an Enshma survivor. And so I, it, I take so much pride in my home now. It's real, like I, that was like the first level of my recovery. Then I had to start addressing my body, how I hadn't gone to the gynecologist in five years or the dentist in five years or anything because all these doctors traumatized me and I just didn't want to deal with them. But you have to if you don't want to die, right? So I started dealing with my body more. I stopped. I was bulimic for a really long time. I, I dealt with, I got, you know, real recovery. So I stopped hurting myself physically. Then it was in relationships, which has been ongoing, right? And I'm married to a really amazing, kind, thoughtful, loving, nurturing man who's one of the safest people I've ever known. And you know what? Despite all my recovery, just today, I finally gave myself permission to take the subway to my new, my drum class that's just started. It's two euros to take the subway. And the class is at the top of this enormous hill. And it's a half hour bike ride. And it's like, blah, like last week I went and I uh, almost barfed. It was so steep. And I probably ride the subway twice a year here. Even though I'm freezing, I have Renault. So my hands are always like, I'm, I am miserable constantly. But you know, it toughens you up. It's. I'm cheap and I'm a masochist and I like to do things that harm me that I survive so that I can feel strong, proud of myself. And when I started to make the connection that enduring pain is not something to be proud of, sometimes it is, it's contextual, but a lot of times I'm putting myself in painful situations unnecessarily just because I'm a probably if I don't. It's not only in her, like internalized massage, it's literally that I'm damaged, I don't deserve comfort. Right? So today I was so proud of myself. I paid two euros to take the subway to drums. And guess what? I actually had the energy for drums because I wasn't exhausted from this bike. And then I rode my bike home because it was downhill. Not a bike, but a Vela, but one of the city bikes. And I was like, wow, I really treated myself. It is so rare that I treat myself because I, I always want to do the hard 
thing because it builds character. And so many men in the outdoors, just men in general, with unhealed trauma especially, are masochists. I think it's okay because it builds character and makes them tough.